make up names of exotic drinks after Brian and Vinny. The Skinny V, it's vodka mixed with apple juice for babies. Oh, get out of here. I went to um, the uh, Chinese restaurant in the uh, MGM Grand. Oh, oh, and I ordered, right, I, ordered, right, right. I ordered apple juice with my meal. And the That's lady right. goes, apple juice for baby. Right. I'm like, well, what's it on the menu for? The reason I didn't drink until I was uh, about 30 years old is uh, because of you, actually. Remember this story? <laughs> I drank enough for you and me. Well, no, that wasn't what I was talking about. The Vinny, a shot of tequila followed by slamming your head into the desk three times. <laughs> oh. Winner! <laughs> hey, I tried to stop him. I just want everyone to know that. The That's funny cool. thing is he did that sober. Yeah. Are you chewing on a cough drop or something over there? Eating a cracker. Anyway, uh, so I, uh, I understand that uh, McMahon may, might wrestle in the next WrestleMania. Well, the way it works, Granny, is they're lying. They're going to say he's going to wrestle, but then he's not going to wrestle. And they had so many tag teams with Charlotte and Diva, uh, Diva, Deville and Pneumonia and all those. And, and pneumonia? pneumonia? <laughs> Growing up, Ambrose admired Canadian-American wrestler. Brett, the hitman heart. That's it for this week. <laughs> All right. <laughs> ah, cliffhanger. Wow. A hook like sidesteps him and grabs his arm over his shoulder. And I don't know what the technical name for it, but does a ba- very basic judo throw, pulling him by the arm over his shoulder. All fine and dandy, except for where they are standing, which is the very edge of the stage. So this poor bloke's back comes down on the corner of the edge in the, of the stage and the ramp. Oh, Christ, I screamed so hard. Oh, this poor fucker. He killed like five other dudes, but I'm sure they'll live. This this dude he killed is dead. There's one student left, and he saw that first guy take that bump on the edge of the ramp and says, fuck that, and he leaves, and Hook just casually walks to the back after killing a man. I hope he's okay, that guy who's dead. He says, listen, I know you're upset, but I gotta tell you, this Powerbomb Symphony, it's not getting over. That means popular. Dude, Spears matches don't do nothing for me, but I like this character. This promo was fun. This felt very much like a WWE crowd in that they pop for entrances and catchphrases and finishers. They're WWE fans. They were dead for most of this that's match what until the finish. That's what they've yes. been trained to do. Yes. So, hey, at least they're drawing WWE fans At least fans they're there. Yes, that's but, the point. But uh, it made the match not a lot of fun to watch. They were messing around here. Tony Khan was in the ring. I've been a fan of Ring of Honor for a long time. I'm happy to announce I'm the new owner. Shane's not here. There's no Shane. It's me. And even knowing that was coming, I still laughed. People were uh, texting and messaging me all night about how excited Tony was. Bro, that's every day. <laughs> like, I've never I've never been in the same place with Tony Khan, and he hasn't been that excited. The AW name is stronger than the Ring of Honor name, but there's a lot of big names in AEW that if you put them on a Ring of Honor branded card, it probably sells some tickets. So I don't know what they're going to do, but it was very clear from watching Tony here that uh, this bloke's got a plan. And they're having this great match. It's a competitive wrestling match, and there's a series of counters in the corner, and Daniels goes to the, excuse me, Danielson. No, that's right, Daniels. Danielson did that, uh, or Daniels. See, it's hard. And he stomps on Danielson's, uh, Daniels' face, and thankfully that's the end of Daniels in the show. I won't confuse him anymore. I guess Chris Daniels is his father, right? Daniel's son, I, uh, you know, son of Daniel. There is no other, no other explanation. The highlights during the most of the match were Jim Ross when Max Caster gets eliminated, and Jim Ross notes, "Listen, listen, you're eliminated." I laughed my ass off at that. Dan Housen appears and curses Evil Uno, who is immediately eliminated, and Jim Ross is appalled at all the silliness. Good Lord, guys, he cursed him. He says, "Chris Jericho looks fucking great." Yep, like. I don't know what he's done. I don't know if he stopped drinking, but I do know the other guy on the show that stopped drinking, Dean Ambrose, also looks like, you know, 10 years younger. Somebody did a uh, side-to-side, I saw somewhere on the internet, of yep. him from, like, a, you know, a few months ago Recently, compared yeah. to today. It's like, dude, it looks like, you know, one one was, you know, a few months ago, and the other was, like, 10 years ago. So, good for him. Further proof, he says, that hurt people hurt people. This whole thing started when Max offered him a handshake and Punk turned him down. He doesn't know if he's responsible for, for creating all this. There's nothing he can say about it. There's nothing he can do. But he needs the Max from last week to come out here. As you read that uh, CM Punk Esquire interview, he talked a lot about uh, this period when he walked away 
and you know what fans thought about him and how depressed he was and how he took a lot of his frustrations out on AJ Lee. Oh. And I'm listening to this interview here and I was like, did they fucking plant that Esquire story? Because if you read that story and then watch this interview, it's like, huh, how about that? He is wearing a t-shirt that has that photo of himself and Punk on it. Couldn't help but notice a white shirt, and he's wearing white pants, and Punk shirt was also white. I can see where this is going. Punk bleeds more here than I believe I've ever seen him bleed before. By the end of the last shot of this, he's on the floor, and he's like the cuts on his forehead. You're watching blood pour from the front of his nose. That's a lot of blood. It gets all over his shirt and Max's shirt and Max's pants. Yes, to a degree, CM Punk did come off as a geek, okay? But you know what? If you watch pro wrestling, it's awfully hard to not have a baby face come off as a little bit of a geek, okay? Unless you, what you wanted was for like CM Punk to just come out and go, fuck you, I don't believe you. I'm, gonna t- yeah. I'm just going to jump you and attack yes, you. Yes, being a good person means occasionally leaving yourself vulnerable. A good person, which is what CM Punk in this story is right now, when bad things happen to them, they try to make sure those bad things never happen to anyone else. A bad person, when bad things happen to them, makes sure someone else must pay. Yes. If this shit happened to me, I'm going to make sure it happens to you. Yes. So, anyway, this whole thing was just beautiful, wonderful television. Just fabulous stuff. It may well turn out that's the best match in the show, but going in, it is not the hottest match in the show, or close to it. Danielson and Moxley feels like a bigger match. The three-way tag match probably feels like a bigger match. Um, the, the Punk and MGF is for sure a bigger match. So... That's not probably a great thing, but uh, like you say on this card, the, having a stacked card is a good thing. So it's not the best job they've ever done building to a main event, but I'm still very excited for the show. It's the Dirty Dogs versus Braun Breaker and Tomasa Ciampa, who comes out dressed like Braun Breaker in a very colorful singlet, or as the announcers outright said, Steiner-esque attire. Hmm. So now they've told you he's a Steiner. No, he's Steiner-esque. I see. I see. It's still a secret. These four men, and the slim chance they are listening, I want you all to know, you have my permission to wrestle each other in any combination of matches you want on NXT 2.0 for the rest of the year. Brooks Jensen is a fucking geek, and they're going all the way. There ain't no halfway. You're supposed to know that this guy is the biggest fucking geek on the planet. And he's such a fucking geek. And they go further down the geek hole every week that he's actually starting to grow on me. I'm starting to find him a likable chap. Like, I actually want to see him succeed once in his fucking miserable life. He beat up Solo Sokoa for 90% of this match and then won clean. So much for that guy's win streak. Just destroyed him. Fuck, that's what should have happened. But it should. And it was awesome because Gunther beating people up is awesome. You know why it was awesome? Because Gunther's awesome. Well. I win. (laughs) I won the argument. I want to see Harland break away from Joe Gacy and get a new manager, Tatum Paxley. If they could put Harland and Tatum Paxley together. After two hours of it, you forget what pro wrestling is supposed to look like. Then you see it again. It's like, oh, yeah, that's why I like wrestling. Holy shit, these guys can work. Much better than most NXT 2.0 shows and that it was actually, I I would give the show a thumbs up. I'd give this show a thumbs up. Still not as good as the Dynamite show. Dynamite, I give about 80, 85 yeah. thumbs up, too. But it was it was good by NXT standards. Sure. 